And now Karinchek one strike away from stranding that runner at third. Now they're getting up on their feet. Here is the one two pitch. A swing and a miss. Got him with a high heat. How about that? Karinchek hopping off the mound. Hugging Zanino. What a job by Karinchek. James Karinchek entering his fifth season in the big leagues, all with the Cleveland Guardians. A huge performance in Monday's victory over the New York Yankees. Thank you so much, James, for taking the time to be with us. So you give up the leadoff triple to Glaber Torres, but then you shut the rest of the Yankees lineup down. Take me through the mindset knowing you have a guy on third base in that moment. Uh, I think I talked about it the other night, but it's just as simple as next pitch and uh... – Execute, executing one pitch at a time, and that's pretty much it. How do you slow the game down to be able to look at it in, in what seems like a pretty simple way? Uh, I mean, I just, that's all I really try to focus on, regardless of if there's a guy on third or not. All I really can control is uh, one pitch at a time, and that's what I try to do. All right, so Cleveland has won four of six games, both MLB highs as far as decided by one run this year. How are you guys doing those close games? I was just having a conversation with Boog Shiambi, who covers the, uh, the Chicago Cubs, and he's like, the idea is not to be in those close games. But when you are, why is it that you guys go in, on to a different level? Uh, I think it's we never give up. And uh, like we always have belief we're going to win regardless of if we're down four in the third, down five in the fifth. It's just like we're going to come back. We're going to battle back. We're going to get some good innings pitched, and we're going to get the timely hits, and uh, it's been going our way. Where do you think that philosophy stems from, James? Is that coming from Tito? Is it coming from one another? Is it becoming coming from the fact that you guys are just a young group of guys that um, just kind of all have that collective mentality? Where does that come from? I mean, I, definitely from the top down, uh, Tito sets the tone, and uh, also we have great chemistry in this clubhouse, and uh, we love playing with each other, and I think that shows. You know, when you had that celebration off of the mound after that performance on on Monday, we saw some emotion that we don't always see from you. You seem like a pretty quiet guy, pretty reserved guy. Where did that come from? Uh, I mean, getting out of moments like that, man, uh, I don't know, man. It's just I let it all out. Once I get that last out, and uh, <laughs> that's all I can really say. You know, when I uh, joined you on the, on the show before we, you were actually on camera, I asked you about Bryant University, which is where you went to school, and you said that, you know, that was just the, an option for you. Didn't have a lot of offers coming out of high school. But do you ever take a moment to look back about your path and say, oh, my gosh, you know, I've been in the show now. This is my fifth season. Look at how far I've come. Do you ever take a moment? Uh, I try to. Uh, not as often as I probably should, but... Uh, Definitely grateful for the journey, and uh, I'm blessed to be here. All right, so born in New York, kind of tell me a bit more about your upbringing. Who did you follow? Who did you like? Who did you want to emu emulate your game after? I was a fan of the guys we're playing tonight. Uh, I was a Yankee fan. Uh, Andy Pettit was my guy on the mound. Definitely like number two as well, and uh, honestly, I like A-Rod as well. He's a, the guy who could swing it. But, uh, no, nah, again, I watched the Yankees win a whole bunch of World Series when I was young, and uh, it was hard not to root for. I mean, obviously, you guys uh, face them quite often, just being both in the American League. Uh, is it a little surreal at first, was it, that you know what, you're just as much of a big leaguer as those guys that you were facing? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's definitely like an aha moment or like a pinch yourself moment when you see the pinstripes. But uh, again, it's been a blessing. All right, you are a guy of few words, James. So tell me what gets you going. What gets you fired up? What do you enjoy doing? Uh, like off the field or like on the field? Yeah. Anything, anything to have a good conversation with you. Uh, I mean, I like playing golf. I like reading. I like yoga. I like Pilates. Uh, what else do I like? I like those high stress moments. I mean, those are what I live for. <laughs> but uh, all right. So, do you like in the, in the high crazy. stress moment on on Monday when you're going up against the Yankees? You give off the triple. Are you like? Tell me about the Namaste moment that you have to like calm yourself down. What what position are you putting yourself in? I mean, are are, are you in shavasana in that moment? Like, tell me what you're doing. Nah, again, it's just as simple as the. I mean, again, just clearing the mind is just next pitch. Because I mean, if you get too cluttered up there, you try to think too far forward. It can really spiral out of control, especially when you're facing guys like Judge Rizzo, John Carlos Stanton. I mean, some of the best hitters in the world. And, uh, you know, i got to compete against those guys again tonight, and I'm getting ready for that.
All right, we appreciate your time, James. We really do. Thanks so much, and best of luck tonight. Thank you. Appreciate it.